by others is that the rail system does not reduce travel times, does not reduce traffic congestion, it does virtually nothing except to spend somewhere between five and ten billion dollars depending on the size of the overruns. Now we have serious financial challenges for taxpayers. Everybody knows that you have serious difficulties with respect to infrastructure in the, um, uh, you have very serious difficulties with respect to infrastructure finance in this, uh, in this state and in this city and county. For example, take a look at state unfunded pension liabilities at this point. This would be for public employees at the state and local level. We have seen that obligation go from $5 billion to $7 billion in just five years. The unfunded government pension liability at the state level, since the local uh, pensions are handled at the state level, has gone from uh, $11,000 just five years ago to fourteen or even, I'm sorry, $15,000. This is a huge liability per household in this state. And then you think about the city and county of Honolulu with their retirement benefits for employees that are not a part of this state program, that liability has gone from $4,000 to $6,000 in five years. And so what you have is a situation where in the city and county of Honolulu, the increase in liabilities for the average household has gone up $6,000 in just five years. What is not under, and recognize we have these huge pension and retirement, uh, 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 retiree uh, medical care difficulties. This shows us what's happening. You see that X is it today. This is what's happening to the elderly population. The actuaries of the state tell us things are going to get a lot worse. If you think it's bad now, you wait because the demographics are stacked against the taxpayers. Uh, we have the sewer settlement, $4.7 billion over 25 years. Mayor Hanneman indicated that it's going to end up costing uh, homeowners $300 in less than 20 years on a monthly basis. $300 a month. That's not a, mo a small amount of money. Uh, we have the water situation, a 70% water rate increase in the next five years. 45% of the pipes are more than 40 years old. Your city council budget chair indicated that she didn't understand how people were going to make it and recognized when it comes to sewers and water, this is not something you have a choice about. You will be forced by the federal courts to build those sewers. And if you allow your water system to become non-compliant, you're going to be forced by the federal courts there. So let's talk about financing rails and, and what it means. Average cost overrun in rail systems is 45%, and that's uh, probably going to be exceeded here because you've already had at least that much of an increase since the first plans. But that goes from to 9 of 10 cases. Take a look at, Mono at, at Las Vegas where they projected 54,000 uh, riders on a daily basis. Uh, I predicted 21,000, and I suspect the losers of $600 million worth of bond funds wish they had read my report uh, when they went forward and bought those bonds, which they have now lost everything on. Let's talk about warning signs. Excessive debt levels at the city and county. That comes from the FTA, Federal Transit Administration, and the state. Talk about warning signs. You have at this point the city council getting ready to suspend the debt guidelines that limit the debt to 20% of, uh, of, of revenues. Uh, that is probably going to be taken up, I think, in the next couple of days. What a warning sign. Here, this early in the project, we're already talking about uh, playing with the debt limit. Another rosy, another warning sign. The rosy general excise tax revenue projections, that out of a state report. Um, okay, construction costs could be much higher. That's something we've talked about with respect to the international research. It's just unbelievable the, 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 how, how incompetent the international rail forecasting industry is with respect to forecasting not only ridership but also cost projections. Uh, FTA has concerns with respect to the full funding agreement um, and has concerns that the GET tax is not going to be enough to solve, uh, the, to, to pay in the long run the costs of the uh, program. So as much as you might think that the full funding agreement is a done deal, not really, and not really when you consider that a suit out there. Then finally, here we are 
in a, in a city and county where you are about to pay the most per capita for the building of a rail line of any community in the history of the country. This is a big deal in a county where you have a $5 billion uh, sewage problem to deal with and a water problem that could cost you an awful lot and huge pension liabilities uh, that you probably don't have a way to pay at, the most, at, at this point. Now, the big problem with all this is you aren't going to know the real truth until it's all over. Let's take the Boston Big Dig. It was going to cost $5 billion or less in current dollars. This is the highway project that was built through Boston. Well, you know, what happened is gradually over the years, the cost went up, finally hitting $16 billion. That's only, however, if you don't include the interest charges that weren't planned to take it to 22. Now, I don't know what the final cost overrun is going to be here, but this is the kind of risk you, fail, you, pay, you, you face. Washington Metro is a good thing to think about as well. In Washington, they built the big metro system, probably the best system in the country. They built the big, the big metro system thinking they were going to get people out of their cars and reduce traffic congestion. Well, they didn't do that at all. But you know what they did do? Their new riders, 92% uh, of their new riders on the metro system that didn't come from the buses were from carpools. That means they left the cars on the road and stripped the passengers out. Now that's a real risk in Honolulu because you have a high carpool rate. So I suspect the, to the extent that you get anybody out of cars onto the rail system, they're going to be carpool riders. There's not going to be any reduction in traffic congestion, and even the plans of the local agencies indicate that. Uh, the, the, the projections are, of course, that traffic congestion will be worse after rail in 30 years or 20 years now uh, than even today. Uh, a lot of people think that transit in, improves travel times to work and improves travel times generally. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you look at the current situation in Honolulu, about 6% of car drivers travel more than 60 minutes to work, about 31% of transit riders do. Then let's go to Denver where they have three light rail lines that are very, you know, they're pretty good lines as these lines go. Uh, they have about the same thing. The transit riders are a little bit less than uh, uh, the 31% in Honolulu, but they're still very high. Look at the national, the same thing. Recognize that traveling on transit is not as fast as traveling by car, even with very bad traffic congestion, because nobody ever pays attention to the fact you've got to get to the transit station, you've got to have buffer time to wait for the train, and all of that kind of thing. And quite frankly, we've never figured out a way to provide transit service that is time competitive with the automobile. A lot of people also think that everybody works downtown. Not a chance. Only 10% of the employment on Oahu is in downtown Honolulu. And that's the only place you can get by transit. I mean, look at it. Around the country, the only place you can get in tra by, by transit that is in any way competitive with the car is downtown. And downtown isn't that big a deal. Now, in addition to that, the Brookings Institution, a center-left organization in Washington that does good work until they get to the recommendation part of their reports, uh, they indicate that uh, in, the, uh, in, in Honolulu, uh, something like, what is it, 18% of the workers in Honolulu, I'm sorry, among the workers who live in the Honolulu metropolitan area, they can reach only 18% of the jobs within 45 minutes. Now, the average travel time to work in this city and county is 25. So 18% transit, and this isn't going to make uh, any difference. So let me suggest some ways forward. We need to be thinking about priorities. You must do sewer. You must do water. You must do pensions. There's no way out of that. There's no legal way out of that. And you need to avoid spending on things that aren't needed. Uh, and, and the basic problem with rail is you spend it costs far too much, and it does far too little. Thank you very much.